So today I would like to speak to you about um, will cloud gaming change our mobile game? And uh, with mobile game, I actually mean um, the game that we as developer play on the mobile stores in terms of visibility. Um, but first things first, I would like to tell you a bit about me, me myself. <laughs> um, I'm Jolene, um, I'm from the Netherlands, and I'm uh, dealing with all the partnerships that we do at Game House. Uh, I have been in the gaming industry for almost uh, five years by now, and um, yeah, I have become a typical casual gamer, playing all of our games, obviously. Um, at the moment, I'm also playing uh, uh, June's Journey. Um, but enough about me. Um, I would like to tell you a bit more about Game House and the Game House story. Um, so at Game House, we are around 150 passionate people working uh, in offices in the Netherlands and Spain. And we also work together with a couple of partnership uh, or a couple of studios that are developing games for us. And they are spread across Europe. Um, we are developing story games. And we have been doing this for over 10 years already. Um, with that, we aim to uh, inspire all women around the world, basically. So far, we created eight IPs. Um, we, by the end of this year, we will have 26 stories. Um, we, we bring them in 18 different languages. And um, so far, we, uh, we reached over 65 million downloads with our, with our games. Um, because we aim uh, to reach and inspire women around the globe, the majority of our players are women, obviously, and they tend to be under 35. All the games that we put out there, um, we um, put them on, uh, or we have them in PC, Mac, um, we put them on, on, the, on the Google Store, uh, iOS and Amazon, and also on Steam. But now I would like to introduce you to these eight different IPs, and I actually should say these eight different women that lead the stories, because in each of our games or IPs, you follow a story of one character. Um, and this all evolves around a town that we came up with ourselves called Snuckford. Um, and in this town, we have a restaurant, for example. This restaurant is run by Emily. And um, that IP is named Delicious. Um, I should say, these are all time management games and also all premium games. Um, so Emily has a sister. Um, her sister is named Angela. And Angela wants to become a fashion designer. So um, her IP named Fabulous. But we also have a beauty salon there run by Sally, Sally Salon. Uh, we have a um, pet clinic run by Amy in Dr. Kers. And um, we also have a hospital, because sometimes people get sick. So we have Hearts Medicine, where Allison is healing uh, the patients. And sometimes we have a bit of crime in the city. So we have Lily Parker, together with Lane, solving those crimes in Parker and Lane. And just recently, we added a new IP um, to, to our universe, so to say, um, which is called Amherst Airlines. And I would like to show you a trailer um, of Amherst Airlines. But before I do, I would like to say all these stories that we put out there, we try to connect to our players through these stories. And with these different type of flavors we have to offer, we create a, a universe, so to say. Let's have a look at the trailer.
So that's Amber. And that gave you a bit of an idea of what type of story games that we develop at GameHouse. Um, and with all the, the stories that we put out there, we have built a loyal fan base already. But it's difficult for us to grow this fan base. And this is because of two challenges that we face as premium game developers. First, it's standing out in the app stores is really difficult for our characters. As you can see in the slide, you hardly see those characters. And it's, it's difficult. Sometimes you get featured, but still it's difficult to grow this, this audience for us. Then next to that, acquiring new users is really, really expensive. So yeah. Those are the two challenges that we face. And um, back in 2016, um, some guys from Hatch reached out to me. Um, they had a plan, a very ambitious plan, a plan that really sounded like music to my ears, so to say. And especially because the three key product dimensions that they presented to me sounded really, really great. Those three dimensions that I put here on the screen, uh, and Johanny already talked about it in his presentation, um, are actually valuable to the users, to the players of our games, but also valuable to us as developers. Because with instant play, um, a, a player doesn't need to download our games. And since our games are quite heavy in size, it's for the user an advantage to just instantly play them. Uh, next to that social play, um, we would love for our players to share their stories that they play um, in an environment so others can, can see how it looks like and maybe, maybe get drawn into it and want to start playing those, those stories as well. But more importantly, um, Hatch, wants to deliver the best games to the players out there. And yeah, they said content is king to us. And obviously, we believe the same, because that's what our games are about. Um, we, we all, as developers, try to develop awesome games. So if a platform is there to, to show these, these best games around, that is is for us just awesome. But of course, we also had our concerns when they first came to us. One of them being, will the app stores accept this? Um, will Hatch be able to, to curate our games with care? Um, will they compensate us fairly? Um, will the player experience be as smooth as they, they, they want it to be? Um, and will the players think about it in the same way? Will they be able to build a high volume player base which is needed to reach those, those players that we are not able to reach no right now? And will the subscription price be um, interesting not only for the players but also for us as developers in the end? Um, by now I can say that two of our concerns are already less of a concern because Hatch is now in open beta on Google, so which means the Google Store accepted this. Uh, next to that, um, in terms of compensation, Hatch aims to, to do that on a, on a per minute uh, basis. And um, we have at the moment two of our games live on Hatch. Um, and I would like to show you um, some performance here. Um, I'm not able to share some numbers, but I'm able to share that in terms of percentage-wise, um, measured against the average, so all the other games on, on Hatch, that with our game Delicious, Emily's True Love, um, in terms of minutes, we are already 182% uh, above average. So we are not, uh, we are not worried uh, about the compensation, and we believe that, that good quality games will be played uh, on Hatch. But we still are a bit cautious about these four, uh, four points. With game creation, for example, I'm really cautious. I'm, I, I want to see if, if Hatch is really going to be the platform where we as, as developers can stand out with our games, where we struggle on the app stores. Um, and in terms of player experience, 
you can do it. You can, can show a player once how it works. And if that player doesn't have a smooth experience, it will, it will go away. Um, yeah, and, and two other things, of course, player base and subscription price. But that's all what we will see once, uh, once it goes uh, fully live globally. Um, so, yeah, the question that I'm trying to answer here, will cloud gaming change our mobile game? And um, we believe it is possible. Um, if Hatch stays true to, to game creation uh, being done with care and not going to be another platform with thousands on, of games on there, um, if the player experience is smooth, and I believe that that's going to happen when 5G is, well, 5G is around the corner, uh, we as developers can be focused on creating awesome games, uh, and we do that with story games. Um, but ultimately, the success of Hatch will be measured by player base and subscription price. Will the platform, uh, will the platform show its uh, viability? Uh, and in the meantime, um, yeah, we as Game House will uh, keep creating awesome games. And uh, that was it. Thank you. And we do have time for questions. Guys? Yes. Uh, you mentioned, uh, hi, I'm Anderson, and uh, you mentioned that you uh, distribute your games across Steam, iOS, Android. Which, which platform performs the best for your games? Where do you get the most installs? <laughs> um, well, the most installs happen on, on Google. Um, in terms of revenue, the best performance is on, on Apple. Uh, is your intent to try and use Hatch as a means of introducing players to the franchise and then push them to your individual kind of other titles? Mm -hmm. Or are you, are you kind of looking at keeping everything within Hatch? What's, like, what's the kind of wider plan portfolio-wise there? Uh, Portfolio-wise, we are planning to have all of our games on Hatch. Um, if it's al also technically possible, of course, and we have been talking to Hatch about it, how we sh should be doing this, and we think from an IP perspective this makes more sense. So you will probably see the IPs on Hatch and then the games behind those IPs. If people don't ask, I have a question. Do you think that uh, as all the games are going to be on Hatch and you have a better chance of social interaction. Do you think you're going to be able to improve how players can go from one game to another and share what they're doing? Do you think that it, cloud can have, be a good solution for that? Yeah. Or that's, is that the expectation? That's the expectation. Of course, we need to see because in terms of player base, there's a subscription si uh, price. We need to see if this is going to be that platform that get make it happen for us, but we believe in it, yes. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. Anderson is on fire. <laughs> two from two. Um, the, I think it was nine games you have so far in the... No, 26. And they're all the set in the universe of, of Yeah, they're all set in the universe, eight IPs it is. So eight IPs, then 26 stories. Ah, okay. Um, any plans to do something for men as well, or just women? Just woman. Okay. That's our core focus. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but you never know. Anderson, you have to touch your inner female <laughs> and play and play the games. Well, it's not not only women playing our games. Of course, there are some men playing the games, but yeah. Yeah, no, they have to Maybe. touch their inner yes. like <laughs> females. That, that's the whole idea. <laughs> so, please. <laughs> So please give a big hand. Thank you very much. Thank you.